so one, so our whole night is going to be off by one minute now. So uh, welcome if you're joining us on uh, Facebook. Jim Stovall is running the camera, so there will be no freezing up this time. I, I had some uh, feedback that we had some freeze ups last time, so apologize for that. Let's uh, come on in the door. Hey, Sarah Lou, can you shut the door for us? Our daughter's here with our grandbabies, so uh, it's going to be a good night, isn't it, Pam? Cassie's here. So we got some new people. There's some old people again there. Hey, Brian. Jason, I think that's Jason. So welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our homecoming. Let's just kind of give it up for the Lord. How about that? We are nearly 10 years into life issues. We started a meeting October of 2010, uh, and uh, we started having meetings February of 2011, so uh, officially two, uh, February 4th is our anniversary date, but uh, we were meeting in Linda's home about 10 years ago, and uh, Linda's still with us, and was anybody else still with us 10 years ago? Pamela, Sam was here, Bill, <laughs> David Sperber was with us. So, uh, yeah, there were about eight or ten of us, and four or five of us are still around. So, uh, I heard a rumor that Shane Watts is moving back to this area. I probably shouldn't put that on the airways, but uh, I just did. <laughs> it's just a rumor. I really don't know that. So, But uh, anyway, welcome to Life Issues. Uh, this is our weekly uh, recovery meeting, but uh, this is tonight is a special night. Uh, once a year, we try to invite uh, old friends as well as our new friends. And uh, a little later on, I may get up here while Brother Bill's, and I may try to take a picture, so hopefully that doesn't offend anybody, but uh, just to capture the moment. And so uh, we're, we're glad you're here. I've just got a few announcements, and uh, these, are, these are good things. This is kind of a celebratory time, so uh, again, thank you for being here. If you didn't know it, it's National Mutt Day. So there's something you didn't know before you came, and it's also National Avocado Day. So, so uh, go have some avocado after you leave here tonight. Did everybody get a bracelet tonight? You like those? Thank you. Oh, hey, uh, good deal. We uh, got like 300 of them for the walk, and I thought, well, let's give out some of them early, and so we should still have enough. Uh, hopefully you took a minute to put your name on the sobriety board out here, and uh, we'll uh, show that off at, at our walk as well as tonight, and we'll, we'll acknowledge... Uh, a few of them. Now, if you're a guest tonight, we want to get you a guest bag. If you're like a first-time guest, uh, who wants to help me with that? Uh, Pam, can you help? Yeah. Uh, grab just three or four bags. If you, if you, we, we've got a Bible in there. We've got uh, some Tootsie Rolls, an ink pen. Yeah, raise your hand if you're a first-time visitor and you want one of our guest bags. Brian Parrot. Come on, man. And Caleb wants two, but he's got to get. He's got two guests. Hey, Michael, good to see you, brother. I want your step there. Yeah. All right. Oh, you know what I'm doing wrong? I don't have the uh, the microphone on for Facebook. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Sorry if you're on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, I apologize. So uh, in this bag that Pam's passing out, uh, everything in there is yours to keep, except there's a red card. And there, there's a red card. It's, it's got a, uh, it's a contact information. If you would fill that out and give it to me or Jim Stovall, that'd be good. Pat Lee couldn't be here tonight. Uh, uh, he's here every night, twice a week, maybe four or five times a week. But his son's in town. And uh, his son lives in Colorado, and so uh, maybe if you guys are watching Pat and uh, Jackson, uh, howdy to you. And so Pat is our program director. Uh, he, he likes to call it pathway director, so I'm okay with that. And so Pat is really uh, a staple of our, our teaching here, and so uh, we, we miss Pat tonight. But anyway, he wanted to be with his boy, so I don't blame him. I think uh, Mark and Laura, it's like their 15-year anniversary, so... Some of, our, some of our normal people are not able to be here. Uh, is Amanda here? Amanda Cooper? Amanda Cooper was going to be here. Uh, 
Maybe she's still coming. I think she lives fairly close. Uh, anyway, I was just going to acknowledge, uh, I guess we kind of acknowledge some of our old times. There's Amanda right there. So now we get a clap for you, Amanda. <laughs> so, uh, is it uh, David, your husband? David, yeah. David, yeah. Hey, good to see you guys. So, uh, welcome to you guys. Amanda, I was going to dog you tonight. Just uh, tell everybody a couple of these gray hairs are from her. But, uh, no, we, we are just happy you're doing well. And uh, thank you for coming. Th thank, you, thank everybody for coming. I do appreciate you being here. Um, let me make a comment about uh, COVID. Uh, this is just kind of our, my official statement. We're, we're going to have uh, life issues in sync with this church's position and, and the uh, CDC guidelines. We're trying to socially distance. It may not look like it, but uh, please be sensitive to that. Uh, we're going to be serving pizza tonight instead of having you grab your own. So just wait and let somebody serve you. Let, let them know what you want. Uh, I think we've got individual cans, uh, beverages, so um, that way nobody's, you know, touching and pouring and digging in ice. Uh, uh, Brother Brian is helping us disinfect afterwards. We're trying to clean and disinfect toys. If you have children back there, we encourage you to wash your hands. Uh, some people do feel more comfortable wearing masks, and, uh, and, and we're good with that. But at this point, we're not mandating that uh, as kind of our position. It's really a matter of faith and conscience, and uh, we want to hold, uphold the law and uh, whatever Governor Parsons and the local authorities deem necessary to do. So at this time, it's not mandated, and I realize there's some people not here because uh, they would prefer to wear masks, so we're just not mandating it this time. So a couple more announcements. Uh, next month, uh, there's a wedding here, and so a month from now is August 28th, uh, we will be meeting at the Cass County Rescue Mission, and uh, Brother Sam Gentry will be giving his testimony. And Sam's been with us, he is now clean like 10, almost 10 years, right about the time we start. He's been with us the whole time, so yeah, we love Sam. And uh, you've been requested to give your testimony, so that, that's cool. I was thinking, well, I guess he's, I've, never, I've never heard it, so... He's been here all this time, and so uh, he's going to be sharing with us next month. Um, now, next week, next Friday is August 7th, and we're canceling next Friday. Because, why Pam? Vacation Bible, Vacation Bible School will be right here. And so uh, many of us are uh, participating, helping with Vacation Bible School. And if you want your kids in Vacation Bible School, Chris and Lauren are the leaders right here. Raise your hand real quick. They're in charge of our Vacation Bible School. And tomorrow is actually a work day. They're wanting uh, everybody that can to come out and help decorate the church. And so I noticed a lot going on over here already. So tomorrow's a big work day. And they're in preparation for August 3rd through the 7th is Vacation Bible School. So uh, it's pretty much kindergarten through 6th or 5th? Through 5th. So if you've got kindergartners through fifth grade and you want them to be in it, uh, see them. You can sign up on our church's website. Uh, morsels for many. We do have a small food pantry here. And uh, the thing I kind of wanted to announce about that is uh, on Sunday, we had the church luncheon and there's like a hundred hamburger buns, uh, good hamburger buns that we want to give away tonight. And uh, so if you want to just grab a, hand, uh, a bag or two of hamburger buns, they're, they were fresh on Sunday. So gra please do that. And uh, anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, we're going to have a video. This will be the, uh, not right now. We got a couple things to do first, but uh, yes, you do. What? They're having trouble with the audio. We're trying to get it We have our best people on it. We have a crack staff of audiovisual team on it. So anyway, hopefully we can play a video uh, about our... Uh, so September 4th is our annual addiction recovery walk where we walk from the jail to the church. It's a four-mile hike, so it's not for the faint of heart, but neither is recovery, is it? They say the only thing you have to change in recovery is everything, right? And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, did, 
today just, you know, addiction really stems from a lust, and lust is a thing of the heart, and it manifests in pornography, it manifests in, in, in drinking, and alcohol, and drugs, and, and lies, and, and many things, and hatred, so it's, but do you, do you know what I was thinking, you know, the Bible says that uh, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, but it also says the spirit lusteth against the flesh. Do you know God is lusting after you? He, do you, do you know in addiction, people, they are consumed by wanting what their drug of choice is. It consumes their life. But what, what if we were consumed by God, right? And so then it becomes a uh, replacement. Instead of recovery, it's replacement. And so anyway, it's just a wild thought. I've just been thinking about just that lust, you know, can be enticed for good things. God created us with that. God created us to be able to lust after something, and He wants us to lust after Him. And uh, so He entices us with His Word to draw us toward Him. And uh, I tell people the Bible is like an apple. When you eat it, it gets bigger. You take a bite, and you're like, oh, what about this? And, and it keeps growing, and you keep eating it. And it's just uh, consuming. So uh, anyway, uh, you've probably seen our table in the lobby. That's for our recovery walk. Uh, please visit that afterwards if you'd like to volunteer. Uh, we've got uh, just this week, uh, I got permission from uh, Sergeant Claiborne to be able to start the walk at the Justice Center. So I'm kind of I'm kind of late. I've been announcing we got this walk, but I just now got permission to do it. And uh, Jim already got the permit two months ago, so we got the permit, and uh, now we got permission. And so we just need walkers. So if you can walk, uh, we we kind of we got the shirts picked out. We're gonna have army green shirts and army green caps. And uh, so I've got 75 shirts and 25 or 24 caps. I think they come in groups of 12. So I got 24 caps. Judge Rumley, uh, Lord willing, is going to be here to speak at the end of our walk. Ashley Seahorn is. If Ashley, you may be online, and uh, maybe Sarah, maybe. What? Yep. We're still considering. You're kind of on probation. We're just <laughs> proving you out. You got to keep coming. So, no. Uh, anyway, we got some posters out there if you want to hang some. Uh, Brother Zach's going to help us. Is Zach here tonight? No? Don't see Zach yet. Is Zach coming, Brian? Okay, he's just getting off work. Okay, uh, we do it there. Uh, I ran a couple co across a couple of jobs this week. If somebody's looking for a job, uh, a living construction needs uh, hired ex experienced carpenters. Uh, full time pay based on experience. I got a phone number if somebody's interested in a carpenter job. And then uh, somebody looking for full time employment. Sue Chief is hiring. At both locations, it says, uh, Peculiar and Kansas City off 150. So, uh, anyway, I just found out those things the last couple days. So, let me uh, continue with our kind of celebration here. Um, so, uh, as I read your name, stand, if you will. These are uh, some of our folks that are in uh, our program, The Journey Home. Uh, Melissa Austin, you're here. you got to stand and remain standing. Uh, my knowledge is you're on lesson three, is that right? Okay. Uh, Ed McCoy can't be here. Uh, he, he got a hold of me today. Uh, he wanted to be here, bless his heart. He's getting ready to have surgery, and he's got uh, so many, so many, uh, you know, you th you th one night I was here late, and Dale Lytle was sitting there. Most of us know Dale Lytle, and he, he's in a walker. And I'm running around. He goes, he goes, how are you doing, Steve? I said, I'm rushed. He goes, I wish I was rushed. <laughs> and it made me think different. I'm like, you know, poor me. Nobody's helping me. But at least I can walk and move. And, and Ed's that same way. He's, he's got a, a walker. And bless his heart, he, he does all he can. Uh, Ashley Seahorn, she's online, I think. Sarah Woolsey. Yes, Sarah's in our program. And Teresa Gear, uh, I'm going to have Teresa come up here in just a minute. But you, you keep standing because she just completed this part program. 
We got a few people in uh, discipleship wanted our church. Uh, James Brumfield, he said he couldn't quite make it. He was running late. Uh, Dale's got him trucking. Uh, Chuck Howe, I know Chuck's here because I brought him. So Chuck's standing. Connie Martin, you got to stand, girl. We're not going to ask what lesson you're on. <laughs> there, that's kind of an inside joke. Uh, Cheryl Turley just finished. Uh, Zach Murray, he's on lesson 16, so he's on the last lesson. Kelly Ranneberger just finished. Uh, Kevin Frost just finished D2. He's already standing. Uh, Ray and Stacy completed that too. They're not here right now. Um, so, uh, I, do, I know everybody puts some anniversaries on, or their uh, sobriety dates out on the thing, but Rich Hayes, I'm going to have him stand up. Uh, he just completed, he's got one year clean last week. So, yeah. And uh, anyway, yeah, keep standing. So, um, let me just, uh, hey, Kevin, do we have the pledge? We're going to say our pledge to the Bible, and then I'll pray, and then I'll have Teresa come up here. Let's do that. So let's all stand now. I think that's all the folks involved in our program. Did I miss anybody? Just wave at me if I missed you. No, I didn't miss you, Brian. We, uh... So yeah, this is kind of our custom to pledge allegiance to the Bible. So let's pledge and then we'll uh, remain standing for prayer. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Let's pray. Lord, we do <clears throat> pledge our allegiance to you and your word. We, uh, Father, we just hold it uh, more dear than ever as uh, we see freedoms being uh, taken away, Lord, but we you say your word is not bound. And so, Lord, uh, uh, many things are bound. And, uh, Lord, maybe someone here tonight is in bondage, but, Lord, I pray your word will help make them free. I pray you use your servant Bill to speak to hearts tonight and just use his story to uh, show how it became part of your story. And So, Lord, uh, I pray uh, for these that are in our program, Lord. I pray your blessing on them that they will be studious and take these things serious and lord that they will complete it and lord it's it's just a step but uh, lord it's it's a big step and some of us just don't complete very many things and so lord uh, help them to uh, finish well and to maybe uh, reach back and bring somebody else along so lord bless our meeting tonight it's it's a homecoming and uh, lord we would like nothing better than just to go home and be with you and have a real homecoming but uh, mm -hmm. While we're here, Lord, I pray we just dedicate this meeting to you and bless each person for being here. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, you can all be seated except for Teresa. And uh, uh, I'm going to have Angie come up here. Or, yeah, Angie. Uh, this, this is her sponsor. Give Angie a hand, too. Uh, I, I had asked Pat to kind of prepare something to... Uh, say to you ladies because Pat wrote the material and it's near and dear to his heart uh, but th this is I, I I really like that this worked the way I think it's supposed to because Angie completed the journey home you know five months ago or so or and uh, now she brought Teresa along and she completed it and you both just developed a friendship and um, anyway I do want to uh, give this certificate and uh, do, you, do you want to say a few words, Teresa or Angie, too? Well, we had a good time. Here, hold, hold the microphone out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time, but I learned a lot. And, you know, when I first got the material, I thought, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure who I'm, you know, I'm not ready. And, and I had to put my pride down and say, look, I need this. He knows what he's talking about, mm -hmm. and this is going to be a study guide for me, a reminder, because mm. we went really deep on some of this stuff, because mm. we both have been in it, mm. and so, I mean, it's well worth the effort. Mm. Amen. 
I began taking it myself and taking trips with through it would encourage anybody that is interested in seriously stopping an addiction mm-hmm. to go through the journey. I think it helped me to keep me from maybe failing because through the book it tells me he fails and he fails and he fails and he's got to get up and he fails and he's got to get up. So I think it helped me realize in the end where he ended up being to go straight mm. there mm. than to have all the fallbacks. Mm. So if you're seriously, you got to mm. be seriously needing to want to quit and you got to be mm. really honest about it. Amen. Thank you, Angela. <clears throat> I think this is like what you already have, maybe. Well, I have one that says victory and one that says alumni. This is a victory also. <laughs> that works. <laughs> We're, uh, we've got to get some new things made up. No, but I need to give you back some of your mm. change, too. <laughs> so we do have a certificate for her, and uh, if you want to hold that up, can, can we take a picture uh, of all the three of us if we get not too socially distanced, I guess, here? All right. All three of you. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Facebook. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's give those some folks some love. That's a... Thank you. Uh... <clears throat> I think that's at the end of my time here. Uh, if anybody lost a little bit of money, let let me know. Uh, somebody found some money on the floor. Yeah. Uh-huh. You tell me. We got a winner. <laughs> Come up here, Kubi. Some honest person uh, found your money, buddy. Good deal. All right. Well, uh... <laughs> Jim, I'm going to have you come up now, and uh, Jim's got some statistics uh, that he wants to share about our group, uh, and then after that, we're going to roll a video, hopefully, and then after the video, we want you to speak, Bill. Oh, man, yeah, about four people have come in. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'll take that. All right. Um, let me get my situated here. Man, it's cool to see everybody. Jason and Brian, David, Raymond. I mean, all, it's like the old guard is, is here tonight. It's really cool. Uh, Chris Newby snuck in. What's up with the old? I'm old. I'm one of you. I'm with you. So anyway, we'll, uh, we're going to do a couple things tonight. I'm, I'm going to do real quick. First, I'd like to have Rich Hayes come on down. Okay, Rich is celebrating his one year. Yeah, and um, something that, yeah, he's my hero, he is my hero, he gives me my verse every morning at 6.50, he texts me a a verse of the day, and it's really very sweet, it's very cool, but um, we're going to try to start celebrating our our milestones more often, that's something we really haven't done a lot to date, Uh, because I know Kevin, he's like, three or four years and and, and Teresa and and Brian I mean a lot of you guys are you're all my heroes you know but we haven't really uh, been good about taking time out to acknowledge and and we want to start doing that so tonight we're going to acknowledge Rich Hayes Um, we even have a cake yeah we have a cake afterwards so when after we're done with our pizza we have a a, a cake in honor of Rich I think it was your birthday too no Uh, no? okay (laughs) it's his uh, recovery birthday I'm a year and four days today. So. Yes, and what's you know it's cool. Like I think, and I've known Rich a long time, and I, and I also do the attendance records here at Life Issues. So I had to look it up. Rich's first meeting. You remember when it was? <laughs> it was years ago. Now. <laughs> it was. It was four years ago. It was September 30th of 2016. That would have been the first time we met. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were kind of in and out for a while, a little slippery, like a lot of us are when we first start down this path. But uh, about a year ago, when you came back, you had you you got it, and you were rock solid. He has been a new man. When I first seen him walk in the doors last September-ish, 
I knew that this is a new man here. He is a new creature in Christ. Amen. And he, he is, yeah, give it up for that. So I think the world of Rich, um, he, he's done a couple of our programs here. He finished the PTSD course that we had. Uh, that was a 10-week course. Steve and Brian Hedges taught it. Raise it. No, it's I'm too wide? Yeah. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been quarantining well. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's all I had. He had. Did you do the journey home? I think no. you did. Not yet. Yeah. All right. You're probably able to do that. Um, and, or maybe D1. Thinking about baptism sometime. In the there you go. Weeks. Following the Lord. Yeah, that'll be my next step. Yes. Very good. Uh, all right, so like I said, he's my hero, one year clean. We've got a cake for him after the pizza tonight, so be sure and congratulate him. Did you write your name on the... Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Everyone here, don't forget to put your name. If you're celebrating you know, your, your sobriety, put it on our wall out there. We've got pins and, and little red dots. Uh, and I think that's it. So thanks a lot, Rich. Um, you want to say anything? I just want to thank everybody here at Life Issues, HBF, um, my family, my co-workers, most of all God, you know, um, yeah. taking this journey, um, clean and sober, you know, 27 years in addiction, <laughs> a year's, uh, that's, uh, that's a big step, Amen. you know. I mean, I've been doing it most three quarters of my life. So um, I love all of you. Uh, thanks for being here for me. And Amen. that's it. Good job, Amen. Thanks a lot, bro. I love you, man. Yeah, that's cool. So like I said, we're going to try to do more of that uh, as, as we hit our milestones. Okay. All right. So next, Steve wanted me to present a few statistics because you guys know I like statistics. I keep a lot of the records around here. Uh, Steve mentioned that Life Issues has been around since February 2011. So that's nine and a half years we've been here meeting. And in that time, we've had a little over a thousand people come through these doors and set into these meetings. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, we've got dozens of people that have been through our programs, Discipleship 1, 2, Woman to Woman, the PTSD that Rich did, the Journey Home. Teresa received the victory tag, second time. Uh, we've got 75 folks that have earned that. And what that is, you earn a victory tag when you attend 40 or more meetings and you're demonstrating recovery in your life. So we've had 75 people earn that tag and won twice. Uh, that's pretty cool. Now this is also cool. We've had 56 people join Heartland Baptist Fellowship, join this church as a result of coming through life issues and getting plugged in, getting a relationship with the Lord and plugging into a local church which is really the goal of this program, is to get us all plugged into the Lord and into the local church. So 56 people have joined. All right. We're scrolling up here on how to contact us. Life Issues has two social media sites, actually three. I didn't talk about the third one, but Facebook page. We have a Facebook page. You all have probably been there. There it is. Facebook page. That's where we post any cancellations, you know, events like tonight, things like that. We've got about 500 people following our page from all over the world. So whenever I post on that page, like about tonight's meeting, we usually have around 13 to 1,500 people view it uh, from all over the world. So that's pretty cool. We have a pretty good reach there. On Facebook, we started putting our meetings on Facebook in March with the COVID, uh, when the COVID fired up. We've got 25 videos on Facebook of all the meetings since March. 25 videos, and with hands down the most watched video of all of those, it's got like 2,000 views. Does, it, does anyone know what that might be, Sarah Woolsey? Sarah Woolsey's testimony back in March. It, it keeps climbing. It's got over 2,000 views now. Um, and our views come from dozens of countries, Nepal, India, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Africa, Nigeria, India, all over the world. And our posts have been translated into all these languages. This is on Facebook. Vietnamese, Hindi, which is India. Italian, Chinese, Russian, French, Swedish, Bengali, Croatia. All kinds of languages. So, so Life Issues has a global outreach. So like this video tonight, Bill, will be seen all over the world. And that's really cool. Yeah, praise the Lord for that. 
All right, the second big outlet we have is our YouTube channel. Have you guys been to our YouTube channel? Some? Yeah, it's really cool. It's worth taking a look. We've got about 57 videos on YouTube. Um, and we also post our meetings on YouTube. So this tonight's meeting will also be on YouTube. It'll be number 58. We've got videos of all of our walks that we, all of our events, all of our walks, all of our year end videos, all of our, we had, we used to have drug awareness days. Uh, we had garage sales for a few years. Uh, fire, oh yeah, we try to, the fireworks tent. We try to forget that we ever did that. <laughs> Back in 2014, we did a fundraiser where we ran a fireworks tent. We actually made good money, but it was, uh, it was really hard to do. Uh, but we have a video of, of that experience. Yeah, I try to forget about that. All right, um, and then another thing that's cool. Here recently, Pat went through all nine chapters of The Journey Home, where he talks about each chapter, what it's about, you know, his point and you know main theme and all that and we have all nine of those videos on the YouTube channel and they and so if, if you if you go to YouTube and just type like Pat Lee the journey home you'll see all nine of those videos so that's pretty cool um, I think that's it for statistics show really all I had oh on YouTube the most watched video on YouTube is our fireworks tent <laughs> It's, you know, it's probably me, just like traumatized, you know, and just when the nightmares go away, I watch it. Uh, actually, we sat down the other night, me, Chris, Lauren, and Sherry, just, just going through the old videos. It's a blast. Uh, the most watched testimony on YouTube is Bill Quorum when he was here uh, on the homecoming night back in 2016. So that's, that's the most watched testimony. All right, so that's it for me, uh, I think. Anything else? Yeah. Let me pass this off. Oh. You do? Oh. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is our promo video for the recovery walk, and uh, it's it's funny. It's a good video, so I'm sure it'll be on YouTube. I think it already is. So. Hey, did anybody not get a visitor bag? I see a couple people come in. Did you guys get visitor bags? Uh, Pam, let's get a couple more. And. Roll it. Can you mention what things you have worn to the job for that? Good morning from the mean streets of Harrisonville, Missouri, here in Cass County. Uh, I was actually not on the mean streets of Harrisonville. I'm actually on the sidewalk of Cass County Justice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll get it. I'll get it.
But here's more numbers that they came up with. <coughs> For every person who has an addiction, that person affects between two to two and a half people per person. That means here in a country of 350 million people, where we have all the blessings that God's given us, 250 million people are affected by addiction. Now, who are those people? Well, obviously, that number, <laughs> there's a lot of people we know. It's your schoolmates. It's the people you go to work with. It's your family. It's your people in church. You know what? People like me, who had a drinking problem for decades. So addiction touches all of us. Life issues is just amazing <laughs> thing to me. My goodness <laughs> I told you it was good <laughs> David wanted to be here tonight but uh, he called me he, he really wanted to see you brother so uh, he just got off work late so uh, let's give a hand to uh, Bill this is Bill Johnson and uh, I know the folks online didn't hear that very good but this is well. Bill Johnson and uh, him and Carolyn were members here for a good long time and uh, yep served our youth and my son's doing that now oh well he's in youth ministry Lord. so bill johnston hello everybody hello. I, when i talk you have to talk back because that's how i work so 
Hey, it, you know, I, I just, I'm thankful to be here. This, this is my home away from home. Uh, you guys, uh, I'm thankful for HBF. Uh, Pastor Brian uh, is a longtime friend. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be here, so that makes me even more nervous. Um, uh, Brian uh, led me to the Lord uh, and uh, introduced me to Jesus Christ in 1992. And uh, <laughs> I got emotional when he waved to me up here. I was like, I didn't know Brian was going to be here. Can I leave? <laughs> But when your mentor is in the building, it's a, it's a, you know, and you know, he's a big part of who I am today, but um, he's just a vessel because God is who I am. Uh, because of who I am is because of Jesus Christ. And uh, tonight I just want to share a verse with you and then I'm going to give you some of my testimony and where I've, where I've been and where I'm at and where I'm going, I hope. And uh, so one of my verses that I cling to is Proverbs 24:16. And it says, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And you know what? That's sobriety. And it's hard in real life, isn't it? And, you know, people that have never struggled with addiction don't understand how hard it really is. Well, just stop doing what you're doing. Right? Just stop. Oh, okay. Um, I've struggled with my weight for my whole life, as you can see. Um, and I have had many, many people tell, well, just stop eating. Okay. You just stop breathing and we'll call it even. <laughs> right. So I'm going to talk about my past and, and sometimes it's hard for me to talk about my past because, um, old things are cast away. Behold, all things are become new in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And December 8th, 1992, uh, was the day that I was set free, uh, from my sin, from that addiction if that makes sense. And um, before I came to know Jesus Christ, I, I, my whole dream was to play. I wanted to play in the NFL. That's what I wanted to do. Pipe dream, right? But I'm big and I'm okay and I kind of work out and kind of eat bad. So I'd be a great NFL player. And uh, I tore up my knee uh, my junior, late junior, early senior year. And uh, it is at that time that I was introduced to oxycodone. Oxycontin, uh, and the opioid crisis is real, isn't it? And I like to take those uh, because hey, I'm not going to play football. I don't want to really live life sober, so I'm going to take a lot of these pills and then drink bourbon. And I drank a lot of bourbon. And guys, I just tell you, I'm not proud of that fact. Some of those folks up on Facebook land tonight probably don't know that about me because I'm. I'm kind of ashamed um, that I probably knew better, but here's my deal. I was a sinner, and I didn't know better. I was in this flesh, and in my flesh dwelled no good thing. So what I tended to do was live reckless. And friends of mine, we'd go out, and I remember it so vividly. One night, we went to an establishment that had food, and we were just going to have a couple of drinks, right? Right? And we had a couple, then we had a couple more, and a couple more. And we got in a fight about who was going to drive because, oh, I'm okay. Guys, we've had that fight. Oh, I'm okay. And we're not okay, are we? It's the same way with sin. It's the same way when we treat God like he's not there. See, the, the only way we're going to make it is with the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe some of you don't go to church, and that's fine. But I hope you do come to know Jesus and I do hope you start coming to church. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight because that's why I stand here. That's why I'm not in the ditch, right? Because God's good. And uh, I'm not going to preach at you. I'm going to preach with you and towards you. Because I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, as Pastor Brian likes to say. I remember a night after I fought with my friend and he ended up driving. That friend's had some pretty bad goals. Goals? Uh, go, goings since him and another friend when I gave up all the, the liquor and the pills and all that they were out one night and they had that fight I'll drive, I'll drive no I'm fine, I'm fine, you're fine and they killed a guy his friend was driving and I'm not going to use names of course we don't do that right but the guy had had too much and uh, the guy lost his career and one of them went to federal prison because of addiction. 
And a lot of people in today's society, oh, well, it wasn't his fault. But let me tell you something. The devil didn't make him do it, guys. He made a choice. We've all made choices. And my choice was to accept Christ and be clean. And uh, if you haven't done that yet, if you've been sober one day here, congratulations. You've been sober a year. Is it rich? A year. Praise the Lord, man. See, and my whole deal was I grew up with that commonplace that I didn't really matter to people. I wasn't important. And maybe that's your issue. Maybe you think, I don't matter. I'm not important. Well, I'll tell you what, you're important to God. And God loves you, and I love you, and I don't even know you. I always say, before it was popular to say, you matter, I tell everybody, you matter. Why? Because whether you've been sober one day or 150 days, you matter. God wants you to succeed, and I want you to succeed. And, and this group wants you to succeed. Man, it's great for you to come up here and say, I've been sober a year. Man, I'm tearing up. I'm a mess. I didn't know. Sorry. But I tell you what, I, one of the reasons I became a born-again Christian is because I was tired of myself. I was tired of the addiction. I was tired of saying, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just take a few pills and, and I'll drink a half a bottle of bourbon. I'm surprised I'm not with Jesus already. God saved my life because why? Because he has a plan. He has a plan for all of us, guys. No matter what, don't let the enemy, the devil, lie to you and say, well, you used to be an addict. You can't be used of God. That's a lie. Use your story to help somebody else. You with me? Don't be scared to go, hey, I was an addict and I'm not anymore. Tell somebody, because I'll tell you, there's somebody in here that's only been sober a week or two and they need help. You know what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to give a hand up. We're not giving handouts. We're giving hands up, right? Where you say, hey, I'm here for you. Call me anytime and mean it. Don't be scared to say, hey, here's my number. Call me. Hey, if you're thinking about having a drink, if you're thinking about scoring some weed, if you're thinking about getting a little meth, call me. I want to help you. I'll meet you anytime, anywhere. Because you know what? Jesus Christ meets you anytime, anywhere. Amen. You know that? He loves you that much. He really does. He is the real deal. And I'm not talking about a religion because there's all kinds of religions. Well, how do I know which one's right? The one that tells you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the right one. The one that says, open your Bible and read about me. Um, I, I know Brother Rich was sending a verse every day to somebody. Yeah, every day, man, right? Because you have to be in your Bible every day. And that helps you. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day. That doesn't mean you're not going to think about drinking. Right? But God is the victor. I love that you, I think it was you had two victory, two victory uh, tokens, right? That's a big deal. But you know when you get the ultimate victory? When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because someday you're going to pass away. And God's not going to say, well, how many days were you sober? He's going to say, hey, did you know my son? Because it's important to come here. It really is. So we can be a family and we can talk about sobriety, right? And we can talk about how we get better and how we make it. But guys, without Christ, we're in trouble. You know, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm a preacher. That's what I did. I went from being this guy that wanted to be a football hero. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a football hero. I'm glad I'm a born again, blood bought man of faith that is, hey, I don't wax eloquent when I speak. I'm not the best pastor. But you know what? God allows me to tell people how much they're important, how much they matter because of my story. And that's just what I want you to know. God loves you. I'm going to say it a bunch. You'll hear you're like, is that all that guy knows how to say? Yep, because it's true. But, but I'll tell you this. One night I remember, guys, I remember calling my girlfriend at the time, my wife of 28 years now. Um, I called her from a Pizza Hut payphone, and I was extremely inebriated. And she said, can you come pick me up? Yep, I'll be right there. Foolish. I made a foolish mistake. And then one night she called me. I went and picked her up from somewhere, drove home. I shouldn't have been driving. I shouldn't have been breathing. I remember hitting the porch. Well, she told me I did. I don't remember it. But she told me I did. Hit the porch on the house. <laughs> Excuse me. Walked in and passed out on the floor. You know, when we were reading the statistics, she was angry with me because I'd been out drinking and drugging 
carrying on. And I laid right there on the floor. And she said, well, if he's going to be that way, I'm just going to be that way. See, the decisions we make affect other people. And she got out the bottle of bourbon and decided she was going to have a few drinks because it was okay for me. See, people see what we do. We have to be a living example. If we're going to be sober, let's be sober so everybody around us can be sober. See, sometimes we, we, we see people do things and we go, oh, well, that must be what I'm supposed to do. Right? And you're, so you're like, well, I'm a victim of circumstances. Don't be a victim of your circumstances. Be a victor in Jesus. Yeah. Okay? So all these things brought me to this time in my life where I thought, well, I'm a mess. I don't want to be a mess anymore. And uh, my friend, I won't say his name, but went to high school at Fort Osage High School. And he had taken me to church one time when I was like a senior, right after I hurt my knee. And he gave me this white holy Bible, white King James holy Bible. And I, oh, that's nice. I know I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this. And I threw it in a box. And one day it was like the Lord himself was just, Direct in my path, you know, like our, our, uh, I know what it's called. The thing we said, what's it called? Our, what? Our pledge. I'm so sorry. Brian's in here watching me, so it's making me nervous. <laughs> Sir, can you, no. So we're saying the pledge, you know, and, and, and I'm thinking about that time because my buddy, I almost said his name, gave me this Bible and I threw it in a box. And you know what? Sometimes we do that with our life. We throw it in a box and we think, oh, well, I'll get my life later. I'm going to let this thing run my life. Don't let that thing run your life. So I went to that box when I realized my life was off the rails. And I dug that box uh, through that box. Till I found that white King James Holy Bible and I started reading it. And then I started trying to clean up my cussing and started cleaning up my life and started to act like somebody, you know. I was trying to clean up my life, but the problem is I can't clean up my life without Jesus Christ. And, and, and my mother-in-law, God bless her, we lost her last June. But she said, she told my wife, Carolyn, she said, does Bill think he's going to die? <laughs> I was trying to clean up my life before I my, 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 met my Lord. They're like, hey, what's up? I've been being pretty good. See, but that's not how it works. Because I'm not good enough. Well, none of us are good enough. That's why Jesus sent his son to die in my place. To pay for my sins, Right? Because we're all sinners, yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God, right? And that wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, right? I'm tracking with you. I love it. Because here's the deal. When I dug that Bible out and I was trying to find Jesus Christ, you know, the Bible says, Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right? Amen. Pastor Brian Hedges over there, being all quiet, sneaky. <laughs> I've known Brian. My parents knew Brian, uh, my, or his parents knew my parents. I've known him since Moby Dick was a minnow. <laughs> and one of us is going to be 50. I don't know who, but I'll tell you what's awesome about that is he, I ran into Brian at 7-Eleven, and their slogan is, thank God, or thank, <laughs> thank heaven for 7-Eleven. I do as often as I can. Every time I pass it, I almost cry like a baby. For real. I've been born again since December 8th, 1992. And every time I go by 7-Eleven, I think of him. Because he introduced me to Jesus Christ, December 8th, 1992. Amen. Yeah. I remember it well because I was standing out there and, and Brian, pastor, excuse me, says, hey, Bill, are you a Christian? I'm paraphrasing. I said, I'm trying to be just like we're all trying to be sober every day for the rest of our lives. Let's just do it. And when Brian, when I said, I'm trying to be Brian's like, oh, that guy's lost as a goose. That's what we always used to say, lost as a goose. And he gave me this tract and it said, aim high. And I said, I am. Because I had that mentality of, hey, I'm going to party. I'm going to get as high as I can. And I'm not glorifying that because... I want to be high in Jesus and on Jesus. God changed my life, you guys. And it wasn't that night I didn't get saved, but I thought about everything Brian told me. And then he started coming, him and Amy started coming over to the house. 
And I don't remember how many times we met, but I remember the night I met Jesus. Because he talked about being saved, and he talked about being born again, and he said, God loves you. And you know what, guys? I didn't feel very loved. And not that my parents didn't love me, but man, some stuff happened to me when I was a kid, and, and, and tragic things. And I'm not going to put it all out there on Facebook Live or anything, but I tell you, it's tragic, and it should never happen to a kid or anybody else. But it rocked my world, so I felt unloved. And I felt like there was no hope. And I felt like I was just going through the motions of life. And so when I got older and I would put chemicals in my body and alcohol in my body, that was what love was because, man, I loved it. And God loved me more than my addiction. God loved me more than it's it. To this day, it's hard for me to say I was an addict because I lied to myself for so long. Oh, well, I just like to drink. I just like to put chemicals in. I'm not an addict. But then on Saturday night, Oh, uh, turned into Sunday, turned into Monday, turned into Tuesday when I was trying to stay high all the time, and I hit it. You know what? That's a perfect sign of an addict, isn't it? I'm not telling anybody. I got this. I'm under control. You're out of control. The only one that control you, should control you, is God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. When, when Brian said, John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. You mean God loves me? God loves me? And then he said, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Right. See, we, 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 we look at people and go, Well, that guy's too far gone. That guy looks like, oh, he's got long hair and he's got tattoos and he's got a chain wallet and he r rides a Harley. Who cares? God doesn't care. I used to have long hair. I used to have a chain wallet. I, I remember I was, I was a pastor at this church. And Brian, one day, a guy came in, and I'm going to tell on you. You're in trouble. And the guy just looked like us, right? Nothing bad. He's just a guy. But how many times can I go up and talk to a guy if I'm in a suit and tie? I was just being me. And Brian, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, goes, hey, go introduce yourself to that guy. Because I had my long hair. Remember that? I had my chain. You don't remember? Brian goes, nope, don't remember that. <laughs> he had all this stuff, you know. And man, he's like, oh, I, hey, that guy looks like me. See, that's why I say we can help people from where we've been to where we are to where we're going. Guys, help somebody else get set free. Get, get, them, get them off the drugs and the booze and whatever and say, man, I was where you once were. I, I keep coming back to you, Rich, because it's been a year. I'm so proud of you. If I could dance, I would. <laughs> you don't want to see that. No one wants to see that. But when Brian told me that, I was loved and, 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 and God cared about me. And then he said this, because I felt like, hey, man, I, I went to school when I, or church when I was a little kid. I said those memory verses. I didn't know any of them. But you know what? I used to say them. I used to sing this little light of mine and uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider and all those things. But see, that's just religion. There was no faith based in that, right? So when I heard John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, and Jesus is saying unto you, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm not talking about a religion. And that's what we try to do. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know what? Every day we take steps in sobriety, don't we? We're like, hey, one step at a time, one day at a time. Okay, I'm going to say it out here on Facebook. I haven't. I've been taking care of my body, which I didn't do for a long time. I walk five to six miles a day right now. I eat right. I've lost a lot of weight, and I'm proud of that fact. And Chuck Norris, you know Chuck? <laughs> I could take him. He says, nothing motivates you more than results. Whether you've been sober a day or a year or 10 years, that is still forward progress. Keep moving forward. Don't give up. And let me tell you something. If you back up and you fall down, get back up, brush yourself off and go again. Because this church, these people in here are not going to condemn you. We're going to help you brush yourself off. We're going to help you out of the ditch, right? Because the Word of God says we're to love one another. And I don't have time to go, oh, you're, you did what? I have time to say, I've done that before. Yes. I'm here for you. God's here for you. This church is here. This meeting every night 
on Friday night at 7 p.m. Bring somebody that needs Jesus, but bring somebody that needs sobriety, right? Because don't be scared to go, hey, I want to help you. Well, they don't want help. How do you know? Have you invited them? How do you know? Because addiction stinks, doesn't it? Listening to that call in your mind and in your heart. Oh, come on. One more time. No one will know. Yes, you'll know. And that cycle continues and it doesn't get better. The day that I didn't have to have any more of those pills, I thank God for that. And six, almost seven years ago, I had back surgery. And they said, hey, here's a whole bunch of these pain pills. I said, no, thank you. And he said, I'm sorry, you're going to need these. Nope, I got everything I need. I don't want those. He said, well, why don't you just take them like they're prescribed? I'm I'm scared of them. I'll just be honest. I said, no, thanks. I'll take I'll take some Tylenol. And the guy looked at me like I had three heads. Maybe he was on them. I don't know. <laughs> but, I don't know if you're supposed to joke, but I just did. You know, because I remember that all of sin had come short of the glory of God. Let me tell you something, guys. In my walk with Christ, I've slipped and I've fallen. I've made mistakes. I walked away from God the Father after I became sober because somebody else's sin affected me and I let it. Don't let what somebody else is doing affect you. God put my feet back on the rock and said, hey, dummy, don't do that again. And I'm like, all right, I won't. And God has found me faithful, putting me in the ministry. You can laugh at that. It's okay. You did. I love it. God allow me to be a pastor. I thought, well, I I can't be a pastor. I'm not good enough. God said, I am. <laughs> Ooh, he is the I am, isn't he? And, and when I heard, for the wages of sin is death. Oh, well, that's me. I deserve death. I don't deserve anything good. And Jesus said, that's why I died in your place. Don't worry about the past. It's covered in the blood. All right. Don't worry about your past. Move every day forward progress, progress Excuse me, towards Jesus Christ. Well, it's too hard. You're here tonight. <laughs> Come on, you're here tonight. You know, because Romans 5, 8 says, but God commendeth his love toward us. You know what I did? I learned a long time ago, it's okay to write in your Bible. And people, you can't write in your Bible. <laughs> hey, Brian Hedges said I can, so I'm going to. <laughs> Brian led me to the Lord. Brian discipled me. I, to this day, as a pastor, you know, I, I have it all together. <laughs> yeah. I still have, hey, Brian, I'm falling apart over here. Can you... <laughs> It's, and he's my support system. There's another pastor, my support system. Because why? Because we all need one another. We all need a support system. That's why you meet it Friday night at 7 o'clock right here. But listen, God, but God commendeth his love toward Bill. Put your name in there. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward Bill. That while... Bill was yet a sinner. Christ died for us. I'm not perfect. I'm just born again. There's a lot of people that go, oh, hey, churchy church. Uh, I got some pictures. You want to see them? Because I wasn't always churchy church. But God saved my life, and I'm going to do everything I can to tell the whole world. I've traveled all over the world because God has allowed me to, to tell others about the love of Jesus Christ. The day that I was adopted uh, into the faith was December 8th, 1992. But at five days old... I was adopted by my family that I have now. And so that was one of the reasons why I felt unloved. And I, I had a family member, i got to be careful here, that told me, why do you want him? He's somebody else's trash. I remember that like it was yesterday when a, another family member told me. And then I clarified that really happened. I'm somebody else's trash. You know what? God don't make no trash. He makes treasures in you. And see, for a long time, I believed that I was trash because the devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. But it just says Christ has come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Right. So if you've been sober a week like somebody put out there, just keep on hunting for the treasure because God's got it for you. Yeah. The devil's lying to you. He's a liar and a thief. Oh, one more time. Right. Go back to... H-E-double hockey sticks. That's where the devil goes. Go back to hell, devil. 
You see, you understand what I mean? Because here's the deal. I found out that I wasn't trash. I was treasure in Christ. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's nothing I did. I'm not good enough. And that not of yourselves, because I can't save myself. I can't just go and be sober and expect to go to heaven. See, that's what we do sometimes. We show up here. And I'm not talking about you guys. I'm just talking about even at church. People go to church, right? And they sing some songs and, oh, good job, pastor. And they've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, they're going through the motions. Don't go through the motions of, of life. Get in Christ and do life with Him. Do life with Christ. Don't do the motions of life. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all following with me? Yes. All right. So, and then it says, it is the gift of God. Every day we have on this planet is a gift from God. You know what we need to do? We need to live it for Him and not live it for me. That's what I was doing. I was living my life for me. I felt bad. I'm somebody else's trash. I'm a mess. I want to kill those feelings. Well, let me tell you what. We all have a God-shaped hole in our heart. And the only way to fill it is through God the Father. God loves you. And you matter to Him. And I told you I was going to say it a bunch. Because it's so true. When I found out, when my friend Amy said, God didn't make no trash, Bill Johnston. Whew, whoa. It floored me. I can remember where I was at. And what we were doing, we were looking through some house that a friend of ours had just bought. And someone had left the trash in the corner. And I made a comment. Well, that's me. I'm just a pile of trash. And she looked at me with those glaring eyes through the Holy Spirit of God and said, God didn't make no trash. You know what? I was like, yes, ma'am. I'm the... You're right. But it stuck with me. She loved me enough because God, God's messenger, a real woman of faith, said, God didn't make no trash. And if you're feeling like trash, you're not. And if someone's ever told you you're trash, you're not. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You understand that? You're fearfully and wonderfully made by God. God loves you. This is, I'm telling you guys, that, 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 point of your life where you're like i'm trash and nobody cares and that's a lie because i'm telling you that's what the enemy wants you to believe he wants to kick you when you're down because you want to be so far down you don't want help up because you think you belong there but you don't belong there you you belong right here you belong in a group with a bible open well that's just religion it's a relationship with the one who can save you and the one that can make you sober because so, I'm telling you, Ephesians 2, 9 says, not of works. You don't work your way to heaven. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Because if we could earn our own way to heaven, we'd be talking about it. I'm going to heaven because I'm awesome. No, you're not. You're not going to heaven because you're awesome. You're going to heaven because he's awesome. You're sober every day because he's awesome. Because you get in his word and you trust him and you pray. You're like, I feel like drinking today. I'm going to call my sponsor. Or I'm going to call my pastor. Or I'm going to call one of the deacons and say, hey, I'm not going to drink today. Did you hear David Cundiff said that he struggled with alcohol for two, what do you say? Decades. Decades. Decades, a long time. Guess, maybe he still struggles, but he's got victory and he's not scared to tell somebody. So maybe someone in here who's an alcoholic maybe needs to call David Cundiff and go, hey man, I saw you can't walk very far, but um, can you? <laughs> right? Don't be scared to pick up the phone and ask for help. And don't be scared if you've never trusted Jesus Christ. Today is the day. We're going to give you an opportunity to trust Christ tonight. Because that's what I do. I don't wax eloquent. I can't speak some of the way that some of these other pastors can. But I can tell you how to get to heaven. And I can tell you who Jesus is. And I can tell you you need to know Him. That's what I can tell you. And I'm, tell you, that's how, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Romans 10, 9 and this is the verse that Brian shared with me. Got me. I was like, yes, sir. And what was funny, man, back, and I'm aging myself, we used to have these little devices and you'd call and you weren't home and they'd leave a message. <laughs> they were called answering machines before all the modern, no one had a phone unless it was in their house. And I remember, and I got, I'm going to tell you that story because I, I believe it's, it's poignant, but I'm going to tell you this and then I'll get to that. I rabbit trail a little bit. It's ADD, but... I don't take anything for it, just so you know. <laughs> Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou can shall confess with thy mouth, here it is, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
It doesn't say if thou goest to the Baptist church. It doesn't say if thou goest to the Methodist church. It doesn't say if thou is sober for 365 days. It doesn't say if you put enough money in the plate. It doesn't say if you pay your bills on time. It doesn't say if you're a good person. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what we need to do. Because Christ died on the cross. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And you know, He was seen. He, it was witnessed. It is like tonight when we brought Rich up here and he said, hey, he's been sober for a year. You know what? They said, hey, this is my God who was dead and is alive again. Right? Yeah. That, he's the only one to ever come back from the dead as far as God God. There's, there's all these gods. They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is alive. Come on. I'm just telling you. And this, and then when, when Brian told me this, and he don't remember because he, he just said, I don't remember that. So, 1 John 5, 13. See, when it happens to you, when you, when you, every day when you move your feet forward and there's forward progress, you remember the good things, don't you? And you remember the bad things. But I'm telling you, concentrate on the good things. Concentrate on who God is. John, uh, 1 John 5.13 These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that's Jesus, that you may know that you have eternal life. You want to know something? You have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. The way you have eternal life forever, and you don't have to worry about if you have eternal life, is by trusting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You just go out and say, you know what, Lord, I'm a sinner. Because we all are. Because He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Him. It says, by me, by Him. You know, God uh, has been very faithful to me. He allowed me to become a pastor. I've been an associate pastor. I'm currently a, a pastor uh, at, uh, where do I go to church? Harvest Baptist. I get confused between Heartland and Harvest. Sorry, pastor. And uh, I'm the bridge pastor there. I help with outreach. Because we believe that everybody needs to know who Jesus is. We'll go up and talk to people on the street and tell them. And some of them say, hey, man, I've never heard that before. And some of them want to know Jesus. And that's what we want for you is to know Jesus. But I tell you, my, my wife, Carolyn, who's, like I said, I've been with her 28 years. Um, her and I both received Christ on the same night. And we've been walking together ever since. And the night that Brian and Amy come over and gave us the gospel, what I've given to you tonight. I didn't want to drink after that. and I didn't want any drugs after that. I just wanted to know more about Christ. And I went through discipleship. I went through discipleship too. And I went through how to disciple. And then I went to seminary. And all these things, right? Why? Because God allowed me to be sober so I could help somebody else. Right? That's what we need to do. Help one another beat addiction. And they said it, you know, the statistics 10 years ago, 85% of people that are incarcerated. You, let's, let's, let's break the cycle. How do we do that? By sharing the gospel. Let's be real for one another. And sometimes, guys, in church, we get this stigmata that you can't have problems. This is a hospital for sick people. And you know what? We're all sick. And we all need a healing, don't we? From whatever it is. We need a healing from sin first through Jesus Christ. But the night that I received Christ, my wife and I, Brian and Amy, had left. And we were living in the basement of Carolyn's mom's house because we were loaded. <laughs> we had so much money, it was... No. We didn't have two nickels to rub together. But we got rich in Christ that night. Because... My wife said, oh, I got to go upstairs. She went upstairs into the living room. We, it's a basement, and then you have to go up through the... This is important for the story. Hang with me. I got like four more minutes. <laughs> so we go, I go upstairs. She goes upstairs. And then I come up, and I'm getting ready to go through the garage into the house. And I stop because the Holy Spirit said, you need that born again thing, whatever Brian was saying. And I got down on my knees in that garage and humbled myself and asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart because I was a sinner. And I was tired of my life the way it was. And it was a mess. 
And, and it's still a mess sometimes. <laughs> Let's just be real. And at the same time, I found out my wife, this was December 8th, so the Christmas tree's up. Little bitty. Remember, we were loaded, so we had the best Charlie Brown Christmas tree money could buy for $6. And she received Christ in front of that Christmas tree. And I received Christ in that dirty old garage, and it's befitting because God made me clean from that dirty old garage. And you know the tree and all that, you know, it's, it's the bale tree we know. But it doesn't matter to God where you do it as long as you do it. You need Christ to help you with sobriety. And like I said, don't let the enemy lie to you. When you slip, if you slip, and you may not slip, thank God, but if you do, don't lay in the muck and the mire and lie, let the lie be your life. Don't sit there and think, oh, well, I've messed up, so it's time to start over. Hey, I haven't cheated on this diet yet. I'm doing good. No sugar, no wheat, no flour. You know how hard it is for a guy that said, hey, uh, triple cheese, please. Uh, yeah, double fries, yes, please. Right? And uh, food's an addiction, guys. I've had that struggle for a long time, and I'm whipping its tail now because I'm trusting Christ, and I'm tired, and I'm beat up, and you know what? It's good because I see results, especially when I put on my pants. I'm like, hey, amen. I'm serious, man. It's, it's, it's a new thing. It's not like it was when it was addiction. It's a different kind of sin. But man, when I was overeating and not trusting God, just living my life lethargic and tired, People say, well, overeating is not an addiction. Want to bet? <laughs> They're all right here. Weed, porn, I mean, right? Acid, I mean, gambling. Anything in excess will destroy you if you let it. Okay? So, I just want to tell you this. I'm going to be done. Oh, there's that water I was looking for. It's right here. <laughs> Ta-da! Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I needed it about... 22 minutes ago. It's fine. Amen. That's the living one. Okay, I'm going to preach some more. You got me going. Now, listen, guys. I'll tell you what. The people here, Steve, thanks for letting me be here, and Brian and HBF. But, guys, I'll tell you, I'm glad to be here speaking to you. And if it's your first night sober, hey, keep walking. Keep walking by faith. Show up here Sunday. Mask or no mask, show up. Find out what God's got for you because God loves you. And if you're not from the area and you're just here, hey, I'm at a meeting. Find where you can meet somewhere and get to a meeting. Get some help, okay? But if you have not trusted Christ yet, tonight is the time to do that. You can get with me, Steve, any, any of the folks that go here, guys up in the booth. If they can't lead you to Christ, uh, we'll help them, right? All right, I love you. Let's pray and then... We'll go. Father God in heaven, I thank you and praise you for Jesus Christ. I thank you for setting me free. I'm thankful for my wife. And Father, I'm thankful for my kids. God, you've done so much for me. And Father, there's so much more to say. But Father, God, man, I, I just I praise you and I honor you. I praise you for just helping me get my right, my right life in you and for you and by you. Lord, uh, we just pray for those that tonight that have, uh, Lord, struggles that you would whip their struggles. Father, I pray for those that have not yet decided to follow you. I pray for those that, Lord, are struggling every day with addiction. Lord, I pray, Father, that uh, the victory comes only in you, Father. We love you, praise you, and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.